Hey everybody, welcome behind the scenes here at Jamie Riddler Studios. I am Jamie and it is Wednesday and I have to say that I am loving, like deeply loving, returning to the practice of morning pages. This couldn't be coming at a greater time for me. There's something about, you know, as the the light is lessening and my day is starting before the sun, that to turn that time into cozy time at my chair, candle lit, journal in front of me, and checking in to what is on my mind and what is in my heart. And often like today, I started in the darkness and by the time I finished, the sun was up. Like how metaphoric is that? <laughs> how beautifully is our energy tied together? And it's such a wonderful way to start the day. It's it's a part of, like, I'm doing it as a part of the journal sampler class, which I am leading this season. It is the first of the six kinds of journal styles we're going to be trying out. You can still join us. Come on over to openthedoor.ca and check out the academy. That's where all the classes are. Um, and it also seems to be a part of, I am doing a detox at my gym, this sort of three-week challenge into detoxing our bodies. And for me, the focus has been primarily on honing into pure foods, drinking more water, just basics. And what I notice is that that is also spilling out into my life in different ways. I'm starting to make different choices, not just about my food and drink, but about anything that I am consuming. You know, how do you curate what you're consuming? I feel like for the past while, I haven't been reading enough. So I started to make more space for reading things that truly nourish me. You know, turning off some mediocre TV show to sit again in my cozy chair or curled up in my bed or on my couch and dive into something with teeth, <laughs> with depth and thought and beauty and inspiration and challenge. And now, don't get me wrong. I am all for taking a brain break. Uh, you know, we work so hard, many of us during the day, you know, our brains are churning and working through challenges. And sometimes at the end of the day, all we need is something sort of fun and mindless and distracting and like a big sigh. And I am not against that. But what I'm starting to think about is when I need that all the time, then maybe there's something out of balance. Because instead of having all of my best energy tied up so that when I have time for me, that I can only eat something simple and easy to digest and not that nourishing, then I think I want to rejig the system. So I start looking at what can I let go of here? What is taking more of my energy than it needs to? How can I work, as they say, better, not harder? And it's really helping. And the more I spend my time on things that are deeply meaningful, on things that nourish me, on things I think are going to make a difference in the world, the more committed I am to refining my creative life so that my energy is well spent. You know, ever since my mom passed away, I've been very conscious of mortality. And I really have a different perspective on the limited amount of time that we have while we're here. And if we're lucky while we're here, we can spend some of that time in what we love and what we want to share in something that feels meaningful to us. And each of us has to decide that for ourselves. It is not up to me to decide what should be meaningful to you. It's up to you to think about what is meaningful to you. Is sharing meaningful? Is learning meaningful? Is contributing community, love, family, loyalty, travel, experiences, excitement, inspiration, spirit? What is meaningful to you? 
And how can you start to bring your life, your attention, your energy into focus around that and release and let go things that just aren't strongly enough aligned for those things that are meaningful to you. This is not something you do in a weekend. (laughs) It's not even something you do in a season. I think that this practice is a lifelong one of refining more and more the, the things that mean something to you and adjusting and aligning your life as you go. I hope we get stronger at it like an old sailor who has come to know the straights and narrows of where his boat goes so he can ride it well, but is also tuned into the weather of today and the swells of today in order to guide his ship well. I also hope that what it means is as we grow older, we burn brighter. We burn brighter in the sense of clarity and depth we have in our own truth, in our own sense of meaning. And yet, like a candle, we have some flexibility and respond to the air of the times. So we don't come become hard and hardened in the things that we've learned, but rather we use them. I'm going crazy with the metaphors today. We use them like a tree. They are our roots, but we can still bend and grow. So that is what is on my mind today. I have a half day in the studio because I am heading out in this spirit of taking excellent care of myself and having my yearly medical. I always like to share that because if you haven't had yours yet, maybe now is the time to book it. Don't wait too long to have a regular check-in on your health and well-being and just giving your body a scan and making sure that everything is well tended to. So that is what is going on in the studio for me today. I hope you have a wonderful day in your studio. Remember your life is your studio. And also it's not too late to join the wisdom gathering, which we held at the studio on Sunday, all around one basic question. What is one thing you could do or not do to enhance your vitality this season. If you're a member of the studio, which I hope you are, just uh, log in and the link came in your last newsletter. And if you're not, come over and join and create a login and contribute to the conversation. It would be great to hear and share what it is. What's the one thing that will contribute to your vitality? It matters. And I will see you on Friday. Mm -hmm.